Hello and welcome to day 127 of the Corona Yoga Challenge. Today is 127, but I'm afraid I'm doing it on day 128 because yesterday I gave myself the space to do what I advise you to do, which is I just didn't want to do it, so I didn't. <laughs> Please make sure that you are checking my website um, so that you've got health issues all covered and you're adapting well. Do subscribe if you'd like to and we're going to start today by coming into all fours. So you're going to just find yourself a comfortable fours position to start with and you're going to let your hips slap to rock from one side to the other side. So think about the movement of the hips just being really really easy, slightly lazy and almost as if you're coming into the sensations within your body so you're starting to notice well, how does this feel? How do I feel? I'm coming into the, the tiny little pieces of information that you get as your body moves. I think it's called proprioception, but I'm not really sure. It doesn't really matter what it's called, does it? It's that feeling of noticing where you are, how it feels, what bits of your body are moving to just be in this space. You're going to bring yourself to nice and even between hands and knees and then you're going to start to round up through the back of the body and lengthen it. So we're going to do this a couple of times so start to go with the flow of your own breath so this feels natural, easy, comfortable and gently enlivening. And with last time. And then if you come down and onto your elbows, so that your elbows are, are rooted more or less underneath your, your elbows are more or less underneath your shoulders. And then we're going to do that same movement from here. So if you just let the palms of your hands come together, so there's a gentle connection between the hands, and a feeling like a kind of, sometimes people describe it as an energetic connection or a connection of the circuit, so that we have got connection between the hands and then you're going to take your knees a little bit wide and you're going to have the toes just gently touching as well. And from here you're going to do that same movement in cat, so we're lifting the back of the body and then gently arching. And you're going to notice how does it feel different if you have just the most kind of gentle but aware contact between the fingertips and the toe tips. And you'll notice you'll probably find a slightly different feeling of movement in the spine whilst you're doing this here. So for me, I find that I can find more space in the upper back. And then you're going to bring yourself back and into off. So back to a nice comfortable position, back to that even all fours settled place. We're going to walk ourselves up to standing now. So you're going to tuck your toes under. You're going to walk your hands back towards your feet. You're going to soften through the knees as you fold forwards. And you're just going to let your elbows rest onto your legs. So you're just folding forwards really, really easily and comfortably for a moment. So whether you're higher up, lower down, doesn't really matter. It matters that we find that sense of resting here. And then bend slightly through the knees. Spread your arms wide. Press down through the feet. Lift up through the hands, take a nice easy breath and then let your hands come back and to your heart. Take an easy breath as you settle into the back of your body. So almost the feeling that we settle back into the back of the waist and into the back of the rib cage. So from here, if you take just the tiniest little step forward, so it might be that your, your feet are almost touching one another in the distance, so do still keep them a little bit apart this way so that you feel that you can stand steadily and evenly. You're going to let your hands settle onto your heart, shoulders relax down and away. Steady through the feet, so you're going to settle your weight into the back foot so that the, light, the front foot is lighter. And then slide your weight forward, so into the front foot. Feel the connection up through the leg as you take the weight into the front foot. Bring your weight back into the back foot again. And then as you slide your weight into the front foot, let your back heel lift up. 
See if you can stay with that slightly quiet way of moving as the knee folds forwards. And then gently start to lengthen your leg back. So you tip your shoulders forwards. And then at some point you might want to lengthen your leg away so we get that feeling of balancing it. And then softly, slowly bring yourself back in. Find the floor at any time that you need to. Settle your foot onto the floor and back to even feet. We're going to have the other foot in front now. So again, we're going to start with that tiniest little step forward. So remember to take your, have your feet wide enough this way, so shoulder width way, so that you can stand without wobbling too much. Hands are going to come in towards your heart. You're going to let your weight travel into the front foot. So the back leg has to lengthen, but it's very gentle on the floor. And then into the back. You're going to let your weight gently slide into the front foot. The back heel is just going to start to lift. You're going to take your foot just off the floor if it feels comfortable. And then angle the shoulders up and forwards. Nice and steady, smooth. And then lengthen your back leg out if you would like. Keep breathing, keep steady. And then softly, softly, softly fold your knee back in. And then come back to standing, back to settled, even, back of the waist wide, shoulders settled, body relaxed. We're going to come down to the floor to do a little bit more here now, so if you want to bring yourself to lying onto your back. So you're going to take your knees up and over your chest to start with. As the knees come in, you'll find that the back of the waist widens, the back of the pelvis almost spreads and widens slightly. Shoulders soften and widen. And then you're going to take your feet onto the floor. So feet are down on the floor, pelvis widens, tummy almost drops back a little bit. And there's not a feeling of forcing or doing anything particular with the tummy, but there usually will be that natural slightly drop back feeling and then widen out across the chest and the upper body. You're going to lift both legs up and overhead, or over, over hips, not overhead. And then we're going to start to slide your weight in your feet forwards and back. And again, we're going nice and smoothly so that as the feet come away, we've got a slight feeling of activity in the tummy. And then what we're going to do is if you take your hands down beside your sides and you're going to take your hands onto the floor. Actually, no, let's keep the hands up because we're going to do this really, really gently. So we're going to start to fly the feet back towards your face. So you'll start with just that feeling. You see my hips just lift a tiny little bit off the floor. And then maybe as you continue, you'll find that you can get a little bit of lift back and up. So that we're barely using the arms, so we're asking the body, the strength of the body and the kind of movement to bring us up. Bring yourself back. So we're not going to stay in it for any length of time. This is just the start of coming into a shoulder stand. So we're going to do that one more time. So if this doesn't feel, if you get to here and go, oh no, this is all that happens, then please, please, please stay with that. Because that's the bit that needs to grow and needs to strengthen and heal and, and happen for the rest to happen. So please don't push yourself beyond the bit that you really need to learn. So we're going to do the same thing again. So you're just rocking your feet back and forward so that at some point you'll probably find you can just float up quite easily. And then from here, I would advise just staying here. But if any of you do this regularly, you can then just start to lengthen up. So you get that feeling like we're lifting up with the balls of the feet. And then you can soften in, bring your knees in towards you, roll out of it, and let your feet settle onto the floor. Hands are going to come wide, shoulders relax down. You're going to come up and onto the balls of the feet. And then you're going to gently rock your knees over to one side. So very, very smooth, easy movement. Keep it really, really languid, really slightly lazy. So, so important to have moments when we are strong and together and determined and directed 
and other times when we are accepting and just resting and going with it. Bring your knees up into the centre and into the opposite side. Just ease them out, soften both shoulders away, allow your body to breathe steadily. See if you can find a way, so whether you need to adapt or change any way that you are, so that you are really enjoying this moment. Bring your knees back up to the centre. You're going to bring your knees over your chest for one more moment, just give them a nice little hug in. And then if you bring yourself up into sitting. We're going to do a little bit of breathing, so if you just want to bring yourself to a comfortable sitting position for you. So that's a position where the pelvis is lifting up and forwards, the shoulders are relaxing down, and you're just able to find that kind of quietness in your body. So that's why using a block can be helpful, because if your hips or your thighs or your back are yelling at you, or even going, I don't like this, I'm uncomfortable then taking something to make sitting easier is going to make it easier for you then to find the quietness that you need in your breathing. So we're going to do a little bit of breathing and we're just going to focus on that really smooth, steady out breath. So use your natural breathing pattern. Don't go faster, don't go slower. Try not to be too dramatic. Try just to be gentle. Just gentle, present and with whatever it is wherever you are right now. So as you breathe in, just let the breath come in. So it's almost like, oh, what's it like? Like the way that, thinking of kind of jellyfish. You know how kind of, je if you watch jellyfish swim, they kind of come up and then they soften down. And then they come up again. And then they soften down. And there's this kind of lovely kind of movement to it where there's a natural in and a natural out. What we're wanting to do is find that feeling within our own breathing so that it becomes a, a very natural, very responsive way of breathing. So that as the breath comes in, notice the kind of movement so it doesn't just go We're looking for the way that the breath comes in and seeing if you can allow that movement. So when I'm talking about it, I'm always using my hands and it's that feeling of that kind of ebb and flow where there's uh, almost like a peak of the breath and then it softens off and eases out and into the exhale. So see if you can find that movement within your breathing and it might be a slightly different um, sensation of breath than I have. But see if you can find that sense within yourself. And each time that you breathe out, just enjoy that. Where it just softens out as if you then start to, the wave crests and then you're back to looking out across that long, steady blue horizon. My challenge for you today is just to live today well. Now this is undoubtedly the most difficult challenge of the whole 128 days, but that's my challenge. Just try and live this day well, this moment in this day. And just try to keep bringing yourself back to that through your day. And my quote for you today, this is from Stephen Levine. Detachment means letting go, and non-attachment means simply letting be. And I like this because I've had so many conversations even mild arguments about non-attachment and particularly non-attachment in the phraseology when I am working with kids and attachment is so very, very important for a kind of a secure and healthy belief in life and people. Um, so I quite like this, that detachment means letting go and non-attachment means simply letting be. I hope you have a lovely day. I hope you are present.